Good morning and welcome to the next installment of demos from 3 Part Junkie. Today we're going to be covering performance reporting. We're going to start here on the Store Serve Management Console dashboard. You can customize this dashboard any way you want. I actually created this one and I've called it Best Dashboard. And the reason why I call it that is because it's the best one that I've come up with um, for today's demo. And I like this one as a former storage admin because it shows me things that I've always liked to see uh, come up first, right? So I want to see what my overall system performance is. Uh, and we're going to look at these charts in a more granular uh, fashion later on uh, as well as my top host and my top volumes from a uh, perspective of bandwidth and then uh, capacity efficiency and the overall system status uh, the host that we're going to be using today is in fact this one right here at the top because we're currently running some iometer uh, uh, bandwidth uh, and um, load on the system itself and here are the volumes that are actually doing the work on the back end so uh, you know it's it's accurate to that point uh, and then um, some of the things that I'm going to be showing you may not be available in your version unless you upgrade to 3.2 um, which you can see here in the lower right hand corner so keep that in mind and, and upgrade um, your SSMC it's fairly easy to do uh, in order to have the feature functions um, that I'm showing you today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up to the reports, right? Um, and within these reports, I've already started a lot of these in the background um, for the sake of time. And what I like to do is I like to show people uh, the real-time exported volume performance. And I've got two different ones that are running here. One is a read-only, and the other one's a, a read-write total. I'm sorry, the other one's a total-only, and this one's a read-write and total. And it just makes it easier uh, to see maybe some of the data points that you're looking for. The way this is um, set up is so that um, you can see, now it's going <laughs> to, um, we'll let this one start to, uh, start to populate. Uh, there we go. And what we have here is, you know, uh, on the left axis, we'll see bandwidth in kilobytes per second, service time uh, in milliseconds, of course, and IOs per second. And anywhere along here over this period of time that I'm doing a real-time collection, uh, I can see exactly how the counters are changing, right? So let's just hover right here for a second and look at what we've got. So I'm going to talk about the total. So the total is almost 60,000 IOPS uh, between the reads and with the reads and the writes. <clears throat> so if I add those together, that would give me the number that we see here. Uh, and then I'm getting 0.22 milliseconds overall um, response time. And I'm seeing about 333,000. Uh, thousand kilobytes or 333 megabytes per second of total bandwidth. Uh, now that's good. I'm actually seeing that I'm pushing, you know, a fair amount of I/O at a fairly good response time and a fairly large uh, amount of um, data that's going across. And where this data is coming from is down here. So I've got um, this VM environment that's that's running. Um, I've got multiples of VMs uh, that are running iometer. And within those, you know, we've got some with one worker. Some of these have four workers. Some have read, write, sequential, read, write, random, 80, 20 mix, 20, 80 mix. Just a whole uh, um, varied batch of workloads, uh, similar to what you'd probably have in production. And I've been running this for several hours just to, you know, keep everything humming along in the graph. So that gives you an idea of, of what we've got going on. Now let me go and I'm going to minimize this back down a little bit because uh, one of the things I wanted to do was, uh, you know, you saw where the IOs were there. Um, and from a performance standpoint, that's looking, you know, really good. And But what does it look like on the physical drive side of things? And from a physical drive side of things, uh, you'll always see a much higher I.O. number that's running, right? So let's maximize this one out for the greatest view. And what we see over here is the scale is 
much larger, right? You've got more um, more bandwidth coming across. You've got more service time. And, you know, and, and when I hover over these, you're going to see my total IOPS is like double. My, my service time is higher. My um, total bandwidth is, uh, you know, almost four times uh, more bandwidth. Well, a lot of that's because of the RAID 6 that I've got going on behind the scenes. So there's a dual parity right going on. And that uh, that causes a lot of back end work uh, going on that needs to happen in order to protect the data in uh, in RAID, right? And there's also other stuff like metadata. So um, all the uh, metadata about the data to include the fact that these are running dedupe and compression as well uh, is also a factor that's going on um, behind there. And What's important to remember in here is that the service time that you see here versus on what we call the um, the exported volumes or the volumes that are presented to hosts is that there's also NV, uh, NVRAM, right? That's uh, that's helping with the service times there. And, and some people have been like, oh, I don't want, I don't think we need to have cash in front of it. And I go, well, yeah, you do because the physics are different. Uh, you're talking about um, milliseconds uh, or microseconds response time in this case um, and, and versus nano or or um, uh, microseconds from an NVRAM. And that and that's why we still do it, and you'll always still do it. And anybody who says they don't need to do it, um, you know, I'd be kind of leery. They're they're gonna have, even even storage class memory is is there for that reason as well because flash drives are fast, but they're still using um, you know a lot of cycles on the back end to do other stuff, right? So always keep that keep that in mind but this is a good perspective some people only look at the physical disk and they get confused all right so let's also look at node cache performance right so that's another one of the factors uh, that come into this and let me expand this one out and I'm gonna change the view a little bit right I'm gonna put it into these little um, compartmentalized graphs because I really want to focus on these three and, and I could go and edit this and get it down to just these three but I like to look at delayed ACK, and delayed ACK is any time that an acknowledgement, a write acknowledgement comes in, it can't be serviced uh, immediately out of the cache, and you know it has to sit in queue, right? So what can cause that? I'm going to actually change this to get it to today, right? So this is a historical. I'll apply it. And that's going to change my my view to just today, uh, or at least in the last hour, and. You know, these these numbers that you get back are all interrelated. I'll scroll back down for you. In that, um, if I'm if my max dirty pages were 400,000, say at this point in time, and I didn't have any delayed acts, then you know that that um, max dirty pages uh, is not at its top threshold, right? So if I'm running a current dirty pages at 70,000, well, I'm sure not anywhere near the max, right? So I'm probably not going to have an issue. Now, if I started to see delayed acts climb over here, I would probably look at dirty pages and see where it's at and compared with max. And you'll probably see that the dirty pages and max dirty pages are pretty much in alignment. And you can see what your high watermark is, right? And why you're getting delayed acknowledgements. Typically, that's where it comes from. I can't, I can't accept any new writes into cache because I haven't staged them to disk because the disk is too busy to accept it. And that can be solved a couple different ways. It can be solved by adding more Solid state drives in the back end. It could, uh, and and sometimes it's 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 code related, right? Nobody's code's perfect, but but typically it comes down to there's not enough uh, drives on the back end to um, handle all the I/O. That that can happen. We we um, we've seen that, and then you can also have cases where the ports are congested, and you can uh, have issue where someone is doing some massive. Uh, say SQL export dump, and uh, you'll be able to correlate it back and say, "Hey, Mr. DBA, I'm seeing, you know, these huge write acknowledge or disk acknowledge delayed acts. And what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing these big SQL dumps. And wait a minute, wouldn't it be a better way to mount snapshots and use that for doing backups than to do 
be doing SQL dumps or uh, or schedule them differently. Uh, most people do schedule them off hours. Some people run them routinely throughout the day, though. In that case, I'd be doing snapshots um, because it's instantaneous uh, copy on first write, much faster way to do it. And then you could mount that snapshot onto something and, and back it up, right? Um, with, with probably a much less impact uh, anywhere along the line. So that's a, that's another thing that I like to look at, right, is, is from this standpoint. And then, uh, you know, some of the other things that I like to look at, let's see, let's look at this. So here we are, we have um, the physical drive performance. And those of you who have been around 3PAR for a long time, remember this from the Inform Management Console, the old IMC Java-based client. Uh, and uh, customers really like to see this, uh, and this is all the different drives kind of working together, doing, uh, you know, read-write operations. Now, there's other stuff going on in the array, so um, there may be a little, you know, not everything always moves in complete unison, right? That's, um, and that's because of the way it goes down and it, uh, it's writing uh, its blocks, uh, writing its regions to chunklets and so on, but this is a, uh, another um, way to look at um, you know how things are performing on the system so you get a pretty good idea of you know what things that you can look at um, and in a future uh, uh, demo we're going to look at um, setting certain thresholds uh, primarily under threshold alert so stay tuned for that one uh, we should be coming out with that one fairly soon I hope this was helpful today and uh, send any feedback uh, in the comments section here on YouTube and we'll see if we can dig a little bit deeper um, if you want to see some uh, delayed acknowledgments uh, thrown in there I just wanted to show you what it looks like when things are clean and not uh, contaminated um, but we can um, you know definitely put some large book out there and, and play with that if, if you want to see that um, anyway uh, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time